Hello everyone, this is Patrick, and I hope you had a wonderful week. Today we'll be in the book of Romans, chapter 5, verses 6 through 8. Before we begin, I'd like us to focus on a phrase, but God. There are two types of but God phrases. The first is the earthly one. How often have you asked, but God, why would you do or allow something like this to happen? I know I have, especially over the past seven months. It's an honest question, but I feel that there's a better way to ask. I'm not going to focus on this one first, but I will circle back to it later. The but God I'm talking about are the words before God does something beyond our power or understanding. These two words are what symbolize the authority and sovereignty over his creation. It is not because of us or anything that we can do, but is solely based on his divine nature and his character to do so. This is the type of but God that we will be studying today. Now let's get into the scripture. Romans 5, verses 6 through 8. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person that one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. After reading this passage, I believe that there are several takeaways that we should remember and apply in our daily lives. First, Jesus' death was no accident. Jesus wasn't an unfortunate martyr, as some have said, but rather this was the plan. That specific date and time were selected in eternity past. This just goes to show and display God's incredible and infinite wisdom and power. My second takeaway is more personal, and you can participate in this small exercise if you want to demonstrate it. You don't have to if you feel uncomfortable, but for those of you who are participating, the exercise is raise your hand if you agree, or lower it if you disagree. There are some heavy questions in here, but it's important. Let's begin. Who would willingly lay down their life for their family? How about their friends? A random stranger? How about your worst personal enemy? For me, it was a bully. How about the worst person throughout all of history? I'll be honest, my hand was not raised the entire time. I remember the people who hurt me, and I wouldn't even say hello if I passed them by, much less give up my life for them. But that's what God did for us. How many people, Christians included, say horrible or wicked things about God? How many mock Him, turn away, or straight out deny his existence. Jesus died for them willingly. We were God's enemies, but he still died to offer that one way to salvation if we take it. That is what Paul calls God showing his love for us, and he hit the nail on the head. I go through all this to say, if God did that for his enemies, how much more will he do for those who love him and are called according to his purpose? Lastly, let's return to the versions of but God that we talked about earlier. The earthly version usually is asked right after a trial begins and we don't understand why. The other but God accompanies the same trials. Jonah says it when he's in the fish. It's found often in the Psalms, when God was just about to wipe out the earth with a flood, and even while we were sinners. This means God's power and our trials go hand in hand. I challenge us then to change our but God why to, I don't understand, but God, show me your mighty power. It might not happen immediately, but just wait and watch what happens. Thank you for listening. Be safe, and God bless.